Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials video 29. It's on synthesis and decomposition reactions. If I were to ask you which of the two reactions you see on the left is a decomposition reaction, the tendency is to choose the rusting railroad car. And the reason why is it looks like it's breaking down. But if you think about it, what is rust? Rust is a combination of iron and oxygen, and so this is actually a synthesis reaction. And so if we ever take atoms and molecules, and combine them together to make a new compound, then we've got a synthesis reaction. So what's an example of a decomposition? The breakdown of water into oxygen and hydrogen gas is going to be an example of that. And so if we take atoms or molecules and we combine them together to form a new compound, we call that a synthesis reaction. We're making something. Likewise, if we take a compound and break it down into atoms or molecules, we call that a decomposition reaction. Lots of times that'll generate a little bit of heat. We can use both of these reactions in the chemistry lab to do simple stoichiometry and practice our lab techniques. And so synthesis reaction are when we're taking atoms and molecules and combining them together. So let me give you a couple of ex examples. Let's say we take magnesium, get it a little bit hot, and then allow it to combine with oxygen, it's going to make magnesium oxide. And so when it's done, you're going to have a new solid that's creating. We're taking a solid and a gas, and we're making a new solid out of it. Another example of a synthesis reaction could be the carbonation of water. And so this is me adding a little bit of carbon dioxide to my soda stream at home. And what's going to happen inside there is that the carbon dioxide is going to combine with the water and it's going to make carbonic acid. So that carbonic acid is going to lower the pH to around 4 and it's going to change the taste of that carbonated beverage. Um, what's decomposition then? It's when we're taking a compound and breaking it down. So here's an example. If we take sodium azide and break it down into sodium metal and nitrogen gas, that'd be a decomposition reaction. So if we have one reactant and two products, it's a good idea that this is probably a decomposition reaction. Where's an example of this actual reaction? Well, this was used in early airbags. And so what you can do is you can put some sodium azide inside the bag right here. It's totally stable, but if you add a little bit of heat to it, so there's an igniter inside there, it's going to quickly break into sodium and sodium and nitrogen gas. And that nitrogen gas is going to fill up the bag really quickly. Now you could imagine a bunch of nitrogen in there is not a good thing. That's highly reactive as well. And so they also put chemicals in here that react with the sodium. Another example could be right here. I'm taking hydrogen peroxide and then I'm simply adding a catalyst to it. I'm adding an enzyme that's found in yeast. And so um, the yeast isn't part of the chemical reaction. It just serves as a catalyst. And so what I can do is I can add hydrogen peroxide to it, seal it up, and I can give it a little bit of a shake. And what it's going to do is it's going to break down into water, and then it's going to break down into oxygen. And that oxygen is going to fill up the bag. Now, if you feel the bottom of the bag, it's going to get warmer and warmer. And the reason why is that we're releasing energy as we break those bonds and form new bonds to the point where it can eventually explode. And so sometimes you have to... Uh, let a little bit of that gas go. Oops, that scared me. So did you learn the difference between a synthesis and a decomposition reaction? Hopefully. In this one, when we're burning magnesium or combining with oxygen, that's going to be a synthesis reaction. And could you do simple stoichiometry on that? Well, one way to do it would be to weigh the magnesium to start. We could put it in a crucible, heat it up, and then we could weigh it when it's done. We could figure out the mass of the products, and we could work backwards to figure out how much oxygen is actually being added. And I hope that was helpful.